So what we're doing today is we are installing uh, new temperature regulators or what we know them as would be a thermostat. Uh, new thermostats in a CAT C7. Now the CAT C7 engine is used in quite a bit of different stuff. It's used in motorhomes, which is what we're in. Uh, it's used in quite a few commercial applications as well. Uh, semi trucks and a bunch of different ones. The C7 that we're working on today is an Acer engine. And it is actually located in the bedroom. Um, underneath the bed, you'll see part of the access panel here. And the other part of the access panel is actually inside the closet. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna unload everything from the closet. We are going to lift the bed up and remove these two panels so that we can gain access to the engine. A little update for you guys. Um, we have the uh, the bed removed and we have everything opened up so that we can get to the C7 engine now. Um, I'll let you know or I'll show you what that looks like. Let's see, you can see right here. This is, uh, this is the bed, it's actually lifted up. It lifts up on these struts in a diesel pusher, but again, uh, this is a job that uh, is good for pretty much any C7. Uh, it's something that they recommend you do every two years. You can see the motor down here. That's one side of it. And then in the closet here, you've got the other side, which is mainly your uh, fan shroud. You can see your coolant reservoir there. And what we're actually interested in is the thermostat housing, which if I get down here is right here. You can see the two bolts in the back of it right there. There's actually six total bolts. Uh, there's two there. I don't know if I can come around to the side here and show you any of the other ones. You can't really see them. It's just a little too dark in here. Uh, I'll get a light and show you in a minute. Okay, we're back with a light this time so that you guys can see what we're looking at here. Uh, right down inside of here, you can see that right there. That is the other side of the thermostat housing and the hose. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this hose and then we're going to go ahead and remove the bolts. Of course, we have to drain about two gallons of coolant uh, just so that we're down below the thermostat housing. Uh, we don't want to be super low, but we want to be down a little bit. So I'll go ahead and get that done and I'll catch back up with you as soon as we get that far. So here's a... Uh, midstream update you can see that we've got the back two bolts down there removed and on the other side here you can see there's a radiator hose it's been removed right down there is where it came up off of and you can see we still have bolts to remove we've got four more to go and then we can pull that housing up and get to the thermostats this really is not a terribly bad job uh, take your time you know, you can do it in probably an hour, hour and a half. Um, I mean, I'm sure it can be done much faster, but I'd, I would a lot, give yourself about an hour and a half if it's your first time doing it. Okay, one more quick update here. You can see we have the thermostat housing off, which is this right here. Uh, you can see there's six bolts. And what we have to do now is, of course, we have to clean this up, get all that old gasket material that you can see there off of it. And then down in here, and under here there we go you can see the two thermostats right there side by side so what we'll do next is we will pull those up out of there and do the same on that mating surface make sure that all that gasket material uh, is cleaned off and everything is in good shape and then we will get ready to put the new thermostats in now with the cat c7 um they there's been some talk about a few things that they've changed on the thermostat for uh, this specific one for the Acer motor. Um, the part number is the same. A lot of people are saying that they've increased the heat range for that engine by 15 degrees. What it is is they haven't actually increased the heat range. Um, it's actually, CAT used to classify their thermostats by the opening temperature and now they classify them by when they are fully open. Uh, in other words, there's about a 15 degree difference. So your old thermostat, which was probably a rated at 190 degrees, um, is now considered a 207, a 207 degree thermostat. Still the same thing, it still opens at the same time, it's just that it starts to open at a rate around 190 and is completely open at 207. Um, I'm gonna show you one thing though that they did change that is an upgrade and it's, it's a rarity, but uh, some people are having overheating issues 
with the thermostats in relation to uh, getting the air out of the system. So I'm going to show you something that Cat did with the newer uh, thermostats and uh, just so that you can tell the difference between a new and an older one. So if I flip the camera around here and we look at one of these older thermostats, uh, you can see, I mean, it's, it's your standard thermostat, but you can see that the, I'm going to try to show you here, the jiggle pin, which is right here, okay? For those of you unfamiliar with thermostats, this jiggle pin, what this does is this burps the system. This allows air to escape from underneath the thermostat. Um, because if you get a giant air pocket in there, obviously you won't get, um, you won't get a proper reading to the thermostat and it can cause the engine to overheat. Now on the newer ones, if I bring one of the new ones up here, you can see the hole is still there, but the jiggle pin has actually been removed, okay? Um, this is not something new as far as thermostats in the, in the I guess, the automotive industry and in the history uh, of engines. They've been doing this for quite a while, uh, removing these jiggle pins. Uh, a lot of people actually remove them before they even put them in the engine, uh, just for safety's sake, I guess. Um, but really, that's the only difference you're going to see in these thermostats. Other than that, they are identical. Um, the temp range is still the same. And we're going to get ready to install these here in a minute after I finish cleaning up this gasket. Alright, so an update here. You can see... Get the camera out of the way there. You can see that uh, we've got the six bolts back in. And everything's tightened back down. we got her all cleaned up, new gasket on. New thermostats in, and we're ready to reassemble. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't take any shots when I really had it uh, when I was cleaning the gasket material off, but this uh, this video is really just about how to put the thermostats in. Uh, they're pretty easy, um, so I really kind of wanted to leave out the, the obvious steps. But uh, now we'll go ahead and reconnect the, uh, the hose. Uh, before we do that, we're going to make sure that we fill this all the way up. Uh, the thermostat housing all the way up to the top just so that we can eliminate any air issues that there might be uh, we don't want any air pockets and uh, and we did fill it up below the thermostats as well uh, so you want to make sure you do that and then we'll put the upper hose on uh, from there we can fill up the overflow reservoir and fire it up and let it uh, let it work its way out okay so last step in this uh, procedure after you get everything filled up and you double check make sure you don't have any leaks is uh, to you know obviously fill up the overflow reservoir and then fire it up uh, let it warm up completely once it warms up and it's up to operating temperature you can shut it back down um, with pushers like this you're probably going to have to do it a couple times uh, you might have to take it out on a couple drives just to uh, to get all the air out of the system and bleed it but uh, for the most part you're good to go um, at the end of this here i will give you part numbers that you're going to need to do this job uh, as well as what tools you're going to need to do this job. It's really not a hard job. It's like I say, it's going to take you about an hour, hour and a half if it's your first time doing it. So uh, let's get it fired up and see what comes of it. Okay, so we've got it all fired up. You might, might not be able to hear me when we get back here. We've got it running. And we're just going to keep an eye out for leaks. 